Hi. Welcome, lovely people. Um, this is your um, weekly yoga solutions spot with me, Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. So I see, yes, I have a, quite a few questions already. Let's see. Oh, hi, John. Well done for making it. I saw you were um, a little busy before, but that's great. Um, yes, I think I think you'll find benefit. I've I've uh, had a few questions already posted, which is great. That means I can get straight into it. Let's see. So Feeney is asking about the um, position of the head, and Mark is asking about drishti. The focus. This is the same thing. Hi, Jan. Good to see you. Hi, Kishori. Buenos dias. Como estas? Está bien? Okay. So uh, the head is ideally balanced on the... What's this? Hang on. Let's have a look. Show. This is Feeney's comment. Long question. Okay. Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> questions become very long when we start talking about muscles. Um, so I don't know if you've joined us yet, Feeney. Uh, but, um, well, if not, um, you'll catch this on replay. And uh, drishti and position of the head. <clears throat> yes, it's all, it all relates. Okay. Yes, when, when we start talking about what muscles we, we use in the um, organization of the head, uh, um, it's very confusing uh, because, oh, good. Um, it becomes very confusing. Uh, yes, ideally, you don't want to be feeling yourself controlling your head with head muscles. <laughs> uh, if you're feeling yourself doing that, you're doing something very artificial. Um, so if you notice that there's tension in the muscles that um, around the head, then there is tension and you try and organize things so that there is no longer tension. Um, and yes, you're right. Um, uh, Mark's question about um, drishti or line of sight or focus, it depends how you, how you interpret these things, um, is, uh, is the answer. So I think I'll start with that actually. Because it's a, it's quite a, it's an important thing. You now, uh, uh, for me, uh, drishti isn't just where you point your eyes. It's, it's also where you're looking from, and, um, and it sort of determines your relationship to what you're doing on on many levels. Uh, yes. So rather than thinking about how to organize the head in space with muscles, if, if we think about how we, how we are engaging in space, there, there, there's, um, there's the sort of outward engagement, the, where, where you bring yourself into space and you engage with the space around you. Uh, and this would be one kind of um, drishti, if you like. And it, it actually has advantages. It ha has advantages that um, is often missed in the yoga world. Um, uh, the yoga tends to um, encourage inward focus, uh, a retraction from the space around you um, in order to tune in onto the inside. And, and you know, this is a good thing to do. If if um, if you are being buffeted by what is around you, but in my experience and opinion, the the this sort of starting with an inward focus tends to lead to misunderstanding because it's not necessarily related to uh, what's actually going on. You know, we start looking inwards and we we discover stuff, we feel stuff. Um, by the act of looking inwards, things will appear to our awareness that, that may have been there before, but 
um, in that arrival, we then have a relationship to that stuff. And it's that relationship that um, makes things confusing. What, what I like to do, um, so, yes, what I like to do is to unify, unify these things. So um, let, let's just get on with some practice so I can explain what I mean in a, in a practical kind of sense. So if you can find yourself in a, um, some kind of seated position, you don't have to be on the ground. You can be in a chair. You can be, um, and, and if you're busy doing something then uh, and being and standing with it, then you can stay standing. It's fine. But um, it'd be good if your hands could have a surface to touch. Um, so if you are sitting on the ground, you can put your hands on a on a thigh or a leg or something. And what I'll do is I'll do the traditional yoga thing first and bring your attention inside. And there's there's a there's a drishti that goes with that. It's um it's a sort of a release back from the outward looking um, into the sort of back of the head, into the back of the throat, into the back of the body. And it's a sort of quietening in process, which will be assisted by a release of tension at the back, um, not to be confused with tucking the chin in, which is an act of um, doing something to the body. It's a release of tension at the back that leaves you um, able to rest into that space to breathe. And it's not just at the back of the head, it's also at the base of the spine. So it's generally letting go of the holding up position. And if you can, uh, the, the, the movement of attention is further back inside yourself, as if looking from further back, that makes sense. And there's a sort of a, a back and down feeling, a back and up feeling that internalizes your experience. And it goes with uh, breathing. So if you can start to meet the space behind your head and neck, as you breathe, if you can start to meet the space behind the base of the spine, back of the waist, as you breathe, you'll find your outward touch, your engagement with um, the earth and any other surface that you can use for support, um, can be employed to help you feel supported in that direction, into the space behind you. And there's a feeling of meeting the space behind you to breathe, so that it's not um, a collapse forwards and down. It's, a, it's a, an engagement with that space, as if the space behind you was support. And if you're, if you're struggling to understand what I mean, it's because you have tension in the base of the skull. So you could put um, a hand there, for example, and sort of get the space between the head and the neck to meet your hand. And the result of this sort of introspection will be a particular arrangement of the head in space. a particular arrangement of the whole spine in space that is perhaps a little more related to flexion than extension, perhaps. It's a quietening process. And the, the drushti, if you like, is a, a back and inwards experience. And from inwards, you can start to experience um, an awareness of up and down. Now, if that's not forthcoming, then being with a space either side of you, physically, um, can start to get you more involved with space. So what do I mean by that? Um, it's a different relationship to your touch. If your hands are touching something, it's more about um, using your hands to draw yourself close to your hands and then out into space. It's a, it's a gathering in feeling. And you can do the same with the legs. For those of you that have difficulty in sitting, um, if you get involved with your feet um, as points of contact, and then use those, use your touch to 
feel closer to your touch. Use your touch to feel closer to your touch. What, what happens is the, the primary curves of the spine, which includes the sacrum, and the, uh, from the bump of the base of the neck down to the heart, get closer to the touch. And the, this sort of brings you into the space either side of you as the spine moves through the body. And the drushti, if you like, is that goes with the being in space. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm totally engaged with my space, um, and you can do this independently of the, the touch, if, I, if I'm totally in, engaged with my space from, from, the, um, from the vision, then I'll be, I'll be, my energy will be forwards and out. And this is, um, this is more normal, I guess. Um, not so much for me, I'm, I'm quite introspective. So, uh, so I find this a useful practice and um, many people do, especially us yogis that are used to spending all this time on the inside, you see. So it's a, it's a different kind of drushti. It's more about being with the space. Now, if you're a bit focused, if you're a bit in your eyes with it, you'll be very much in alert and very much in your thinking process. But if you can soften your vision to be a little more peripheral, so you get more of a, a listening quality to your vision. So, so whatever it is you're looking at, be more interested in everything around it, if that makes any sense to you. So you get more peripheral in your vision, a bit, bit more like listening to this side, a bit more like listening to this side. So the throat opens up, the, the, um, the heart opens up. And, and you know, so you're very much in space. This is a different kind of drushti. And it, it takes you into a relationship to space that is possibly a little more to do with extension. Um, and how that relates to the first thing we were doing is that sense of, instead of uh, using your touch uh, to, to uh, your outward touch to support you inwards, you use a sort of embracing, gathering, widening touch to draw yourself through and out into space. And so the drushti goes with that expansion. Okay. Um, and really, what do we need? We need, we need choice. You know, which one, is, which one is right, which one is wrong? This is the usual kind of thing. Um, the, the answer is whichever one you are prone to doing most of your life you need to do the other one <laughs> so uh, uh mark um you know I, I work with you so i i would suggest you probably need to be a little more with the space behind you especially behind your head uh but you know don't forget the tail end because in doing that then when you when you relate to the space all around you it'll be from a more centered position um who else is out there let's see um feeny um, I would I would say you probably okay um, you you probably uh, need to um, be a little more with the space around you be a little more stereophonic which would go very well with your singing you see and maybe you probably do this when you sing um, if you can take your awareness into this sort of softened space all, all about you. Uh, and through sound, you can also in, include this, the space behind you. Then the, the, the drushti will be um, less internalized. Um, just a guess. Um, but uh, the, the, the thing is, whichever one is your norm, you need to play with the other one. Not not to uh, make yourself do something other than is natural, but to, to basically uh, e equalize choice. Because in, in the equality of choice, we, we find the center. We find the potential of the center. Now, where is that? Well, the center is when from our presence to engagement with um, use of senses within space, we find support that moves to our touch. It's when the internalization that 
comes from our external support or our relationship to space um, gives us our touch. When, when we get an equation between those things, when, when we have equality of choice, uh, what we have is the center of things. And the center of things is the spine. So the results will be that your drushti isn't in your head. <laughs> uh, your drushti is in this central channel. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of theories about um, what that means in terms of um, energetics and um, state of mind. But uh, you, you can try this. If you, if you play with being with space and wide and breathing, and with the release of the breath, if you stay with that, something will come back to the center. Or you can play with being with your touch and meeting the space behind you, perhaps with that, and breathing. And if you stay with that, as you release the breath, something will come back to the center. So both, both actions uh, guide you towards the center if you stay steady with them okay? throughout the cycle of breathing. If you can find an equality between how you are in space as you breathe, how you are with your touch as you breathe, it's an omnidirectional engagement from all directions, in all directions, as you breathe. If you can stay with that engagement as you release the breath, there'll be something that centers, and it is the release of the breath. And where does that happen? It's going to be in the lungs. It's going to be... through the central channel. When you can equalize between your touch and the space that you occupy, the center of that action is gonna be the release of the breath and the spine. Now, whereabouts you choose to observe from is up to you. I would suggest taking it out of the head now, if you can enter this physical practice of being with your environment, then you instantly find a different relationship to touch and space that is going to be more centralized. So, you know, rather than staying in the third eye center, if you bring that down to your throat, for example, you can centralize the breath there. And there are those of you that are familiar with yoga techniques, um, centralizing the breath in the throat is something a bit like ujjayi, makes a, a, um, a sibilant sound. Tells me I have two minutes left. So as you sit and twist, um, I, I'm inviting a twist so that um, I feel something different. Center, center the breath in the in the throat, and then. But from there, you are with space, listening to space, um, feeling to space. From there, you are with your touch, be with your hands, be with your base. And then hopefully what you experience is a centralization of the release of the breath in the throat. And from that centralized release of pressure, there's a two directional movement. Which will be down through the heart to the base and up through the crown to the heavens and the, the result of being in your spine is that the limbs float see they're, they're not doing the twisting maybe when we try the other side you could centralize in the breath and the heart uh, the dorsal spine so how, how do you do that you engage with your touch space behind you engage with the space all around you either side wide you breathe what you're doing and if you stay doing what you're doing as you release the breath then your touch engagement with touch and space can equalize and in that moment of equalization with the release of the breath you should find something happening in the middle and uh, if you're in your lungs in your chest in your ribs um, what's likely uh, you're likely to experience a very strong response in the ribs is basically a centralization in the spine behind the heart. Uh, that's my preferred one. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just about out of time. Um, that's my preferred center, the heart center. Um, if we, we want to talk about such things. Um, structurally, it's the center of the dorsal curve, the, the rounded part of the back, from the bump of the base of the neck down to the heart. Uh, below that is the uh, thoracic lumbar junction, if you like, which on some people is extended, on some people it's flexed. Um, so if you're a flexed person, from the lower half of the thoracic spine, then perhaps that is a more useful center to feel as the release of the breath, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so that would be solar plexus, I guess. But for me, the heart center, from the bum of the base of the neck down to the heart behind me, when the release of the breath is sort of centered in that place, I get the experience of the spine elongating in both directions. And it's a powerful action. It's a powerful sense of um, axial support. And um, it connects me directly to the heavens it, as, as much as it connects me directly to the earth, which is, um, hmm, which is the experience I seek when I meditate. So, um, Drishti. Oh yes, uh, and the point being, when, when you're in that center, the the uh, the drushti isn't something that happens in your eyes. You know, you you, um, you may see with the eyes, but you, um, I find it useful to look from the heart. Um, some of you may find it more useful to look from the throat. Others might find it more useful to look from the solar plexus. Others still may find it more useful to find to look from the lower belly. choice we have choice anyway i hope that was useful uh, drop your comments below let me know how it went for you um what do i have coming up um, i'm off to turkey next week i'm going to uh, be running a holiday yoga thing with tuesday mcneil uh, she teaches in the morning and um i do my thing in the afternoon it's a very relaxed setting uh, if anyone wants to join me, I think I, th I think there's some places left and flights are cheap at the moment. So um, you can come along to that. After that, uh, end of July, beginning of August, beginning of August, first, the first and third week of August, I'm doing yoga in the garden, this, this beautiful garden here. Um, morning sessions, two and a half hour sessions, come along. Oh, yes, the, yes, the Italy retreat is full now. There's a bit of a waiting list. Uh, um, so uh, if you are interested in coming to um, Italy with us, then uh, I would suggest putting your name down for next year because it's, um, a, it's um, a very special retreat and it's very popular. So um, uh, what else? There's plenty of things going on. But, uh, yeah, that'll do for now. Um, Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, yeah, so next next week um, I am in Turkey, so um, I don't think I'm going to manage to do my Facebook Live. I'm not sure what the time frame difference is, but I do know that uh, Wi-Fi is not that um, good. <laughs> but um, if if I work it out, I will try and be here. Um, oh, that's good news, John. I'm glad it helped. Glad it helped. Yeah, I think the answer in the end, the answer is in the breathing. Um, it is. I know. It is. We hear this all the time, um, but uh, that's usually taken to mean I don't have to do any other, anything else apart from breathe, which is yeah, okay. But um, the the answers to our postural issues are related to how we feel about ourselves and how we breathe, which are related to each other, of course. So um, in the end, the answer is the breath. Mm. So I'm glad you, that accessed something for you, John. Thank you, Feeney. Um, yes, uh, that was a great question. Um, I hope your your head has worked it out. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, like, like everything else, the, the head is a relationship between other things. It's uh, between your body and the space above, perhaps. Um, Yes, uh, there, there were some other questions. I, I posted some answers directly to 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 you, Helen, around the um, use of the uh, how how to help with arthritic joints, arthritic hip 
precisely. Uh, there's another one from Jasmine around pranayama. Uh, I, I would, to do the technical specifics of pranayama, I would, I would rather work with people in person because there, there's so much room for for um, complicated um, misunderstanding. Uh, where, where, as soon as you make things techniques, it does get very confusing. Um, so my mission on these things is to is to bring it all back to the nature, I guess. Anyway, uh, I, I'm rambling on. I'm, I was supposed to have finished five minutes ago, so I shall sign off. Uh, please, if you've found any benefit from this, do share this on, on Facebook, wherever you, wherever you feel to. Uh, it's on page if you think they might enjoy it, or a group if you think they could, uh, people on it would in, get use out of it. Um, yes, help spread the word for me, and uh, I'll be very grateful. If you, if you, if you touch one person, make a difference to one person you've made a you've done me a great favor um yes that'll do uh, this is mark j aquaviva signing off uh, i look forward to seeing you um possibly next week unlikely probably the week after namaste <laughs>